welcome back to Lady Alchemist's YouTube channel. So please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. For today's video lesson, we are going to discuss the quantum numbers. And for today's video lesson, I am going to discuss to you the quantum numbers. So please keep on watching. The objective of this lesson for today is to define and identify the four sets of quantum numbers and explain how quantum mechanical of the atom describes the energies and position of the electron. So without further ado, let's get started. Now we understand that electrons are both particles of wave. Now we are ready to learn of how electrons are arranged in an atom. The location and energy of every electron in an atom is determined by a set of four quantum numbers that describes the atomic orbitals. An orbital is a region in space where most of the electrons are likely to be found. These are the S, P, D, and F orbitals with different shapes. Remember that these are not electrons, just a region in space where electrons can be found and each one can hold up to two electrons. The first quantum number is the principal quantum number. It is designated by letter N. It has a value of 1, 2, 3, and so on. It represents the energy level of the electron. The larger the value of N, the farther away from the nucleus. Electrons normally exist in the lowest energy state, called the ground state. When an electron goes into a higher energy state, it is said to be in an excited state. Excitation is achieved by supplying energy to the atom from an external source. In the original Bohr model of the atom, the electrons may exist in any allowed circular orbit. A circular orbit was specified with a whole number integer n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. This was referred to as the principal quantum number. The next quantum number is the angular momentum or also known as the asymmetral quantum number. It is designated by letter L. It describes the way the electrons move around the nucleus or the the shape of the probability distribution of the values range from 0 to negative 1. If the electron has a value of n is equals to 3, meaning it is in the third energy level, the L value would be L is equals to negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. So 3 minus 1 is equals to n minus 1. Therefore, you are referring to the third energy level. Again, for the second quantum number, the angular momentum, which is designated by letter L. If L is 0, we are describing the S orbital. If L is equal to 1, we are describing the P orbital. If L is 2, we are describing the D orbitals. And when L is equal to 3, we are describing the F orbitals. The third quantum number is the magnetic quantum number, designated by letter ML. It describes the orientation of the orbital in space and can have an integral value of negative 1 to positive 1, including 0. So if L is equal to 2, ML is negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. It determines how many orbitals they are of a type per energy level and therefore, it describes a specific orbital. If L is 0, ML must be 0. When L is equal to 1, ML is equal to negative 1, 0, plus 1. It actually describes the P orbital. If L is equal to 2, the L value of 2 gives, gives us the 5D orbital. And if L is equal to 3, it gives the 7 F orbitals. The last quantum number is the spin quantum number MS. It considers the spinning of electrons around its own axis as it moves about the nucleus. 
the spin of electron is either clockwise or counterclockwise. Ms can have the value or the two values of positive one-half and negative one-half. These two orientation are also sometimes represented by an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing downward. According to Pauli exclusion principle, that no two electron can have the same set of quantum numbers and will have opposite spin value. When n is equal to 1, l must be 0, which means that we are describing the s orbital, and the s orbital can accommodate only two electron, which is the ms positive one half and negative one half respectively. If you are referring to n is equal to 2 or energy level, second energy level, there are two possible quantum numbers. n is equal to 2, l can be 0, or l can be 1. If l is equal to 0, you are referring to 2s orbital, and the ml value is 0. If l is equal to 1, you are referring to 2p orbitals and the value of ML is negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So when N is equal to 3, L could be 0, 1, 2. If L is 0, you're referring to 3S, and the ML is equal to 0. So S orbital is only 1. If L is equal to 1, you're referring to 3p. The ml values is equals to negative 1, 0, positive 1. And since you are referring to p orbitals, the number of orbitals for p is only 3. Next is l is equal to 2, you are referring to 3d. ml value would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. And the d orbitals for d is only 5. A sublevel in a main energy level is defined by its n and l value. So we're referring to the third main energy value level. If l is equal to 0, the kind of sublevel is 2s. If l is equal to 1, you are referring to 3p kind of sublevel. And if you are referring to 3d, the l should be The magnetic quantum number describes the orientation of the orbital in space and can have the integral value of negative L to positive 1, including 0. Consider the following example. So S, for the sublevel S, the L is 0, the ML is also 0. Sublevel P, the L is 1, negative 1, 0, positive 1 for ML. And if you're referring to this sublevel, the L value should be 2, the ML value are negative 2, negative 1, 0, and positive 1, and positive 2. Now, let's compare. Example, oxygen. The electron configuration of oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. According to Alpo principle, the electron should feel in the first energy level, meaning you're going to use the first energy level, then move to the second energy level or to the next higher energy level. Now, how about Hans' rule of multiplicity? According to Hans' rule of multiplicity, when an electrons enter into a sublevel containing more than two electrons, they will spread out over the available orbital with their spin in the same direction before they paired up with opposite spin. So as you can see, in the Hans rule of multiplicity, we're going to write the arrow for 1s should be in opposite direction following the Pauli exclusion principle. So 1s2, we have 1 and 2 arrow. Since you're looking for 8 electrons, you're going to move to the next higher energy level. So you move to 2s. Okay, you put the arrow, which is actually the same with the number of electrons. So you have 2s2. And move to the next 
energy level or next sublevel, you're going to distribute the four electron in different orbital, in the p orbital. So, for the rule, under Hans rule of multiplicity, you're going to spread out before pairing up. So, one, two, three, before you move back to the next or to the same orbital. So, if we're going to count the number of spin inside the orbital, you have 8 spin, meaning it is actually equal to the number of electron in the oxygen atom. So, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, remember, if L is equal to 0, you are referring to the S orbital. If L is equal to 1, you are referring to the P orbitals. If L is equal to 2, you are referring to the D orbitals. And if L is equal to 3, you are referring to the F orbitals. Okay, take a, take a look at the given. N is equal to 1. The only orbital or the only orbital present for N is equal to 1 or the first energy level is only S orbital. The second energy level, N is equal to 2. The orbitals that are actually present in the second energy level are the S and P orbital. N is equal to 3. You have 3 orbitals, the S, P, and D orbitals. And N is equal to 4. You, are, you have 4 orbitals, the S, P, D, and F orbitals. Now, if you're referring to S orbital, therefore, L is equal to 0, ML is equal to 0, and the MS is positive 1 half and negative 1 half. Also, you may refer to the arrow pointing upward and arrow pointing downward, which is the positive 1 half and negative 1 half value. Therefore, the number of electrons is 2 electrons. And the number of orbitals for S is only 1. Next is P. If you're referring to P orbital, L should be 1. And since we have 3 orbitals for P, ML is equal to negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Therefore, the number of spin inside the orbital of P are 6. Next is the d orbital if you're referring to the d orbital l is equal to 2 and the ml is equal to negative 2 negative 1 0 positive 1 and positive 2 therefore the total number of electron inside the d orbital is only 10 electron and the number of orbitals for d is only 5 electrons or 5 orbitals the last orbital is the f if you are referring to F orbital, the L should be 3 and the ML are negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, and positive 3. That is why you have a total number of electron for 14 electrons using the 7 orbitals of F. Now let's try this. Give the four sets of quantum numbers of the following. Number 1, 2s2. Number 2, 3p6. And number 3, 4s2. You have 5 minutes to answer. Time's up. So let's check your answers. So here is the answer. Did you get it right? I hope so. So to sum up, N is the energy level, L is the orbital type, ML is the specific orbital, and MS is the spin. You can also check on the table for the summary of the lesson. So I hope you learned something new today. 
will see you on my next video. And thanks for watching. Bye!